Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR Channel. Uh, today, we continue our discussion about semi-restricted design. If you remember from previous uh, sessions, we said that in orthodontics, generally you have two main categories of mechanics, free object design and semi-restricted design. Last time, we started discussion about semi-restricted design and we uh, talk about three main application of this design. One, when you have a major horizontal movement, for example, a retraction of the canine, protraction of the posterior teeth, retraction of the anterior teeth. These are all major horizontal movement. And semi-restricted design is the design of choice for this type of movement. The second category of movement that semi-restricted uh, design is very useful is minor tooth movement. And the third, during the finishing stage, when you need precision and you want to put each tooth precisely in a certain position. However, semi-restricted design have his own limitations. That would be the focus of discussion today. One of the main limitations of semi-restricted design is the fact that it restricts the movement of the target unit in the plane of movement. So, for example, uh, we know that for extrusion of the anterior teeth and proclination of anterior teeth, uh, one couple system with the, the anterior V-band is a design of choice. There is no restriction on amount of the extrusion of the anterior teeth. On the other hand, if you decided to put two couple system right away, there would be restriction on amount of the extrusion of the anterior teeth. I just remind you that one couple system is considered free object design, two couple system because the type of tooth movement of the anchor and target unit affect each other is considered a semi-restricted design. Another limitation of the semi-restricted design, in general, engaging the wire in all the teeth reduce the activation of the wire. Let's look at the example. We are planning to intrude the anterior teeth and we can make a simple design that is similar to one couple system, even though we know it is not really one couple system, but from many aspects act as a one couple system. In this system, uh, you can have significant amount of intrusion of anterior teeth and probably get advantage of extrusion of posterior teeth. But what happened if you decided to engage the premolar and canines in this design? Is actually you are limiting not only your movement, but also you are limiting the activation of the wire. You do not allow the wire to express its activity to the maximum level. That's another limitation of semi-restricted design. The third limitation of semi-restricted design is system by itself is undetermined system. You really don't know the magnitude of the forces and moment that applies to each tooth. During the minor tooth movement, it is okay. Clinically, it's acceptable if we don't know all, every details. But if you have one, two or more major movement and you are using semi-restricted design, uh, the system can be very, very harmful for the patient. So be very careful. During the minor tooth movement, when the forces and moments does not need to be completely precise, it's okay that we become a little bit blind and use the wire and allow the wire to express itself. But if you have a couple of major movement, this design can be harmful. Another limitation of the semi-restricted design is that the direction of the forces and moments can change. This is especially important when you're having a major movement and uh, you did not design your mechanics properly and you decided just take a shortcut and just put a flexible wire, for example, to do extrusion of the canine. During this movement, many times the forces and couples can change direction. Even though at the end you may get close to the movement that you wanted, but during this process, back and forth movement of the teeth unnecessarily can have biological side effects. Increased possibility of, for example, root blunting or root resorption. On the other hand, by proper design of your mechanics, you could prevent this type of side effects. One of the last limitation of semi-restricted design is the requirement for preparation of the anchorage. 
in free object design you can design a complex anchor unit but most of the time you have the option also to create a simple anchor unit why is that in free object design anchor unit just need to respond to primary forces and moments action and reaction whether force or moment anchor unit is its first job in semi-restricted design anchor unit has two jobs first responds to primary forces and moment however he needs to be prepared for the secondary forces and moment that control the type of tooth movement therefore your design need to be ready for this type of responses at the same time considering these factors free object design has its own application semi-restricted design have its own application and both are very useful in orthodontics we just need to use them properly next time we will discuss some clinical example where we combine the free object design and semi-restricted design to achieve uh, the most efficient mechanics during the tooth movement i hope you enjoyed this session of the CTOR channel if you have not subscribed to our channel please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button thank you